Hey, we have on the board a problem from MIT Integration B 2022. This is problem number six. We have the integral from pi to zero of cosine x plus cosine x dx. What I noticed to start is with a trig function, when the input's something complicated, that's a problem. So right off the bat, that's a real problem. But what we do have is we have this nice formula, which we'll go over now. So doing that, let's rewrite our integral. We're gonna have pi to zero still, and we're gonna have um, cosine of, so this is gonna be our a right here, and this is gonna be our b. And now at this point, we've solved everything, and this is gonna be pretty easy to integrate. Actually, no, I still have no idea how to integrate this thing. So what we need to do is we need to do, do some more work. So it's hard for me to explain how I knew to do this. One giveaway is when you have this kind of a lot of times when you have um, a boundary like this, like pi to zero, it may be an indication that you want to use odd even functions. So that's the first giveaway. Uh, also with all these cosines and sines, it makes me think of the complementary angle formula. So let's go over that real quick. I want to do a u substitution. The u substitution is going to be u equals pi over two minus x. And that's not very intuitive, right? Because we don't even have pi over two minus x in this expression. And it's all based on this formula. We want to be able to use this, and it's going to make that possible. Actually, before we do that, let's also notice we could have we can also say from this same expression, just rearranging x equals pi over 2 minus u, and then we can get our dx, and that'll be equal to minus du. So then we'll rewrite our integral, but first let's change our boundaries. So when we we'll just plug those in here, okay, so we do pi over two minus pi, plugging in our pi, <clears throat> it's gonna be minus pi over two, and then pi minus two, pi over two minus zero is pi over two. Then, okay, so cosine x, we have our x value, so we're gonna have cosine pi over two minus u, which we found earlier was just gonna be sine. And then we're gonna have our cosine, same thing again, cosine pi over two minus u, minus sine okay of our pi so you can kind of see we're actually transforming each of these expressions we're flipping from sine to cosine and then we're going to have sine cosine pi over 2 minus u and then on our du we're going to have a minus sign but i'm going to bring that all the way out here then let's transform this expression again a minus sign allows us to flip our boundaries not that we have to but let's do that so we'll flip that and we'll have pi over two. This integral becomes from pi over two to minus pi over two. Cosine pi over two minus u is gonna be sine of u. This is gonna be cosine, but again, this is sine of u in here. And so this one's gonna be cosine of x or cosine of u. And then we're gonna have sine. That's gonna, this here is gonna be sine of u du. And then at this point, now that we've done all this work, obviously this is really easy to integrate, right? No, actually it's not. It's actually, I have no idea how to integrate this. So, <laughs> so given we still don't know how to integrate this, we do have a very useful property here. Let's go over that real quick. We have this property, it's something like if we have an integral from a to negative a of f of x, and if f of x is an odd function, this whole thing's gonna be zero. So this is the great trick of these contest problems, is if you can get it like this, there's no more work to do and the answer is just zero and you're done. So let's see if we can show, what we need to show really is, so we already have this a minus a situation going on right here. So that's right. What we need is we need to show that this is an odd function. It's pretty simple. The definition of an odd function is just if we, have an, if we put in the negative input on our function, we should just get back the negative of that function. So what that's gonna let us do, let's make this whole thing, in this is all our function. So let's say, all we need to do is just plug in negative values on each of these variables. So assuming we already know that, like we know that sine's an odd function and cosine's an even function, so we already know that sine minus u is minus sine of u. And then we can do the same thing here, minus sine of u, but because 
cosine is an even function, this is just going to be the same as cosine sine of u. So let's just bring this down and let's keep going. So then here, again, cosine minus u, because cosine is an even function, is going to be cosine of u. And then sine, okay. But then here, this sine minus u, because it's an odd function, is going to be minus sine of u. Um, but again, this is within another sine, which is an odd function. Sorry if this is confusing. But so then we can essentially bring this minus sine all the way out here. And we have a plus cosine u sine of sine u. And then here we have minus sine u cos sine u. And long story short, this is our function. If we take, think of this like if we multiply minus 1 times all this, what do we get? We get minus sine u cos sine u plus cos u sine sine u. So this is actually our minus f of x. So this whole thing is an odd function. And so therefore we have, we have this set where we have an odd function and we have this a to the a minus a situation. So then the answer is gonna have to be zero. I had a couple videos on odd and even functions in Owl School of Math. If you need to review that, I'll provide a link in the description. Thanks again for watching.